Jim, his clothing. I know. Ours are just as strange to him, especially your short skirt. Friend, what year is this? Where are we? Witchcraft! Witchcraft! Jim. Honey, I don't know how to explain it, but somehow we've been set back in time. But Jim, that's impossible. Impossible? I know it's supposed to be impossible, but it seems to have happened. Well, let's not try to figure it out now. We've got to get somewhere to find some help, some way. Jim, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can go any farther. I simply have to rest. All right. We'll stop for a while. Welcome, my friends. To my little workshop. Do not be alarmed or cause unnecessary commotion. You are in no danger. At least, not for the moment. Won't you please step out? I am Dr. Ernst von Hauser. These are two of my uh, assistants. Manfred? And Wolf. Where are we? I told you. We are in my little workshop. And I tell you again, please do not be alarmed. What time is this? What century are we in? Does it matter, my friend? There really is no such thing as time. Uh, except as a relative measuring device in your own mind. We're not interested in double talk. What happened to Margaret DeMar? What have you done with it? Please, Mr. Crandall, you will please remain calm. What have you done with my sister? Your sister is entirely safe, Mr. Ma, and I assure you, I did not bring her here intentionally. She certainly didn't come here of her own free will. I didn't say that. I brought her here to keep her from harm. Then where is she? Let me see her. <laughs> but of course. To the armor. Come and see here. Snell! Indiana, bring us the Fraulein de Mar to Ira Schwester. Well. No need for alarm, Mr. Candy. She'll be all right. She'll be able to freshen up. We will even furnish her a change of clothing. I notice you were intrigued by my servant girl, Didiana. Hmm. And there you might be. Just a few thousand years ago, she was serving in the court of Tonk Amemzes, one of the great pharaohs of Egypt. And now, she is serving me. <laughs> Quite an experience, is it not? This is like a fantastic nightmare. I don't understand any of it. How did you get Margie here? I was conducting an experiment with a pair of gentlemen from the past. Uh, when the girl and her boyfriend uh, wandered into the machine's field of materialization and encountered them. They shot the boy. They might have killed the girl had I not teleported her here very quickly. And the two red soldiers? I sent them back to Shiloh, Mr. Crandall. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> they probably died there anyway. Fantastic. Utterly fantastic. Tell me, Doctor, why did you send Sandy and me back to... To 1789? I admit I took advantage of you to conduct a little experiment. Oh, you are 
a little dangerous, but you see, no harm has come to you. Port City Kobe is an open-hearted city bordered by the mountain range of Loko in back and the sea expanding in front. Kobe is located almost at the center of the Japanese archipelago and next to Osaka Prefecture. Let us today introduce some of the main sites of Kobe. which is the only Japanese-style garden in Kobe. Although located amongst modern buildings, it offers a quiet and relaxing haven throughout the year. Especially recommended are the colorful azaleas in spring and the beautiful chrysanthemums in autumn. There are three important cultural assets in the compound. The Hassam residence, which was built in 1902, the stable with the round tower, which was built around 1907, and the funayakata, or houseboat. For the shopper, Kobe is truly a paradise, and the center of that paradise is San Nomiya, with its wealth of specialty shops, boutiques, department stores, and an underground shopping center. In Center Guy, you will find building after building of attractive and fashionable shops with an amazing array of goods. The recently remodeled underground shopping center is called Sanchika, which is full of boutiques, restaurants, and so on. Sanchika is also equipped with an information counter, character and pattern telephone access information network system, and multi-television. In Kobe, you can find interesting and unique gifts to take home. When it comes to dining, the cosmopolitan city of Kobe offers something for the most demanding of palates. The Kitanacho area is famous for its restaurants, which offer a great variety of cuisines. Don't forget to try world-famous Kobe beef. The high-quality Kobe beef comes from purebred Japanese cows fattened on a special mixture of imported grains at ranches located in the hills and mountains behind Kobe. There are also many places where you can enjoy drinking while listening to music. Discover the restaurants, discos, pubs and bars of Kobe with their exotic blend of Western and Eastern cultures. You're watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams. sand, sagebrush and tumbleweed, rolling mountains and giant cactus. This is the old Santa Cruz Trail, running from Santa Cruz and Old Mexico to Tucson. Tumacockery National Monument stands, preserving the ruins of Tumacockery Mission. Another mission, San Ovier del Bac, stands on a slight hill facing south across the Santa Cruz Valley. on this magnificent shrine was started in the early 1700s. Not far from busy Tucson, an exact replica of old Tucson has been built as a motion picture location.
Children of the Carrillo School in Tucson re-emphasize that the Santa Cruz Valley is the blending place of many cultures. This is a Mexican Christmas festival. When the pageantry of the festival is done, there is candy for all who scramble for it. You and your family can enjoy the vacation thrills of this spot, and no matter where you live, you can reach it quickly, comfortably, and with utmost economy. Travel this year the roads to romance, to places you have always wanted to go. And when you travel, go in one of the quality motor cars your Chevrolet dealer has to offer. It will be your magic carpet that will carry you to the land of your heart's desire. Okay, Jonathan, we're sending you back in time. Before television, radio, even before soft drinks. Careful, anything you do could change history. Mom's the word. Activate time travel mode to the year 1885. He's there. Hey, where's my Pepsi? <laughs> it's... Oh, no. He took it. Relax, Smith. What could 12 ounces of Pepsi possibly change? Yeah, what could happen? <laughs> Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. When you're taking off on home leave, Swire Travels Holidays and Cruises can take you anywhere in the world at a price to suit your budget or government allowance. Phone Swire Travel on 216216 now. Space? We've been there. Time? That's the new frontier. Physically traveling through time isn't possible. Not yet, at least. But with a time machine from Time Computers, you can go into the future. Imagine a whole book, encyclopedia, or even a movie on a single disc. And the internet is changing the way the next generation think. In the future, it'll change the way we live. From looking at tomorrow's weather, to banking, shopping, entertainment, and even communication. From here, we can see a billion years into the past. With a time machine, you can see into the future. Why buy an ordinary PC when you can buy a time machine from Time Computers? visit to Coral Gables, one of the world's most beautiful cities, may well feature a trip to the new campus of the University of Miami. Today, thronged by students from both Americas, the campus is an outstanding example of modern architecture. Freshwater swimming in the world-famous Venetian pools, fed by cool artesian wells, is open to all visitors in the area. From the mainland, a causeway stretches across sparkling Biscayne Bay to Cape Florida and to Crandon Beach, certainly one of the most magnificent bathing beaches in the world. Park area, operated as a county playground, is shaded by thousands of graceful palms and was once part of America's largest coconut plantation. Fine roads and highways bring many sightseeing points of interest in the surrounding area within easy reach of the vacationist. Here is a case of giving the visitor the bird a gaudy, colorful, and noisy costume. These macaws are completely free to fly about, with no cages, nets, or fences to restrain them. You and
and your family can enjoy the vacation thrills of this spot. And no matter where you live, you can reach it quickly, comfortably, and with utmost economy. Travel this year the roads to romance, to places you have always wanted to go. And when you travel, go in one of the quality motor cars your Chevrolet dealer has to offer. It will be your magic carpet that will carry you to the land of your heart's desire. You're watching Sleepcore, media for insomnia. volcanoes are the most spectacular and yet the most readily accessible in all the world and offer a magnificent view of nature's greatest power display. They are the legendary home of the fire goddess Pele. The date is February 28, 1955. And for the first time in over 100 years, a violent eruption is underway in the Puna district on the island of Hawaii. About 200 miles over water, from Waikiki Beach and the Honolulu area on Oahu. This eruption touched the lives of a thousand people, destroying homes and valuable lands, yet there were no deaths. The mighty lava fountains and rivers have erupted on the east rift zone of Mauna Loa, a mountain that is the greatest single accumulation of lava on Earth, over 10,000 cubic miles in all, built up by countless eruptions down through the centuries. A rare sight as a volcano erupts in the backyard of a home with devastating results. Lava boulders as large as a house are carried along in the crest of the river. These are formed by large sections of crater rims breaking off, or maybe a portion of a lava river bank, which has been undermined. Hawaii's volcanoes have a fascination for all. It is quite true that the natives and tourists alike run to and not from the eruptions. Yet, they all have a deep respect for the fire goddess Pele, who according to legend, is responsible for the volcanic activities. For they will occur whenever she returns to one of her many homes on the slopes of Mauna Loa. The lava rivers that flow over the land cause most of the damage. They may move swiftly, or they may just inch along, but nothing can stop their forward march. This once beautiful palm grove is doomed to a fiery death. The soft rustling of the trade winds through the palm fronds has forever been stilled by the incinerating power of the lava flow. Each tree dies with majestic grace. This eruption continued for 88 days. One of the lava rivers soon reached the ocean and formed a firefall. The molten lava tumbling over the cliff drops into the ocean and great explosions occur. This is visual evidence of how the islands were formed. For as the lava cools, it now becomes a part of the land, slowly adding more and more shoreline. Five years have passed, and now on November 14, 1959, another great eruption started. As viewed from the air, at its start, at least seven different crater mouths were spewing forth lava in fiery fountains. This time it occurred in the great caldera of Kilauea, high up on the slopes of Mauna Loa. Once again, Pele had returned dramatically to another of her many homes. Daring and resourceful cameraman, 
descended into the crater area, proceeding across the newly formed lava lake, which had crusted over to photograph these fantastic scenes. Note how this huge lava boulder has formed a perfect image of the head of Pelly. She seems to speak as lava moves across the lower portion of her mouth. Mark Carter, award-winning volcanic photographer, moves in for a close-up shot. Visitors at the famed Volcano House on the rim of Kilauea Crater were among the first to reach the eruption area, for Kilauea Iki was just a short distance away, and rangers of the National Park Service designated places of safety for the volcano watchers. Three days after the start, the eruption again gained in fury, and fountains spurted to a height of 1,150 feet. In a week's time, the pool of lava in the crater was 300 feet deep, and it buried the vent from which the fountain had been spurting. This action continued unabated through a series of 16 eruptive phases, each lasting from two to 32 hours of life. Cinders fall continually and devastate the surrounding area. And the nearby Park Road is buried under the Black Deluge. Activity goes on, and at one point, a record fountain height of more than 1,900 feet was recorded. This resulted from an unusual amount of gas present in relation to the amount of liquid lava coming out. Great whirlwinds are generated by the intense heat and swirl upwards in menacing cycles. You may wonder about volcanism. How does all this happen and why? If you will keep in mind that underneath the great caldera of Kilauea, a giant sort of plumbing system exists. Now this pipeline or conduit system leads downward toward the great pools of magmatic matter that lies beneath the surface of our Earth at depths up to 40 miles. This fluid matter is restlessly moving about in some unexplained manner, and its motion is indicated by the seismograph instruments on the surface in the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory on the crater's rim. Its presence in increasing amounts is measured by an elaborate system of tilt meters, also designed and installed by the observatory at strategic locations on the mountain. Now these instruments are capable of indicating just how much the ground is tilting in one direction or another. This is of great importance, for preceding an eruption, the area swells, much like a balloon being inflated. And this produces an outward tilting and is indicative that the magma is rising and can result in an outbreak. After an eruption, the swelling stops and the tilt becomes measurable inward. Another indication of the movement of lava through the conduit is the increasing number of earthquakes recorded and the frequency, location, and depth serve as still another indication of the coming of Pele. She is a fiery yet gentle goddess, for Hawaiian volcanoes are characteristically non-explosive. The lava is of high fluidity and of low gas content. Thus it escapes in the form of fountains without undue explosive violence.
its fluidity also results in high speeds of lava river flow, and it reaches speeds up to 35 miles an hour under certain conditions. Before Kilauea Iki died, it had built a conical hill 150 feet high and had left a pumice blanket five feet deep, half a mile from the vent. When it was all over, on December 21st, the lava pool in the new crater was 380 feet in depth and contained over 51 million cubic yards of lava. We end our trilogy of Hawaii's volcanoes with the Puna eruption on January 13, 1960. Following earthquakes, giant cracks appeared in the village of Kapoho, and residents started evacuating. At 7.30 p.m. in the valley, just behind the town, the eruption started from a rift a mile long. Fountains sent lava cascading over the land, and some of it encountered underground water, resulting in great explosions of steam and throwing lava chunks high into the air with the roar of a hundred jet engines at full power. The stores of the village of Kapoho were hastily abandoned as the fountains danced in the nearby valley and cinders poured over the area. The lava rivers headed down toward the ocean a short distance away, but first they crossed the papaya groves, leveling them. You're watching Sleep Core. Sleep tight. Its woods and water is where its beginnings, and so it remains today. The Grand Traverse region was so named by French fur traders in the 1600s. To save many hours of paddling around the 18-mile-long bays, they would row their birch bark canoes from the mainland to the tip of Old Mission, then across to what is now the Lelanau Peninsula. While a somewhat risky journey, this natural spectacle inspired these men to name the region La Grand Traverse, or the Grand Trip. The lumber barons discovered the region's huge natural ports and massive growths of virgin timbers around the mid-1800s. For the next half century, many of them built huge empires in the wholesale cutting and shipping of timber to the growing Chicago and Detroit areas. Because of the lack of controls on cutting, these fortunes were made at the expense of the landscape. Today, second-growth timber is still harvested on a limited basis, and Michigan white pine and cedar are prized in the construction of furniture and homes. The major reason for the area's survival lay in the diversity of its early settlers. At the height of the lumber boom, they came from all areas of the young country, bringing with them a multitude of skills. When lumbering collapsed around the turn of the century, the small town of Traverse City had built a sturdy house of industry and trade, strong enough to survive even as its foundation collapsed. The incredible beauty of the area still had enough appeal to attract large numbers of tourists from Midwestern cities. With the advent of rail and steamship lines, then the automobile, tourism became the area's number one industry and remains so to this day. The huge lumber baron mansions in Traverse City's downtown neighborhoods are reflections of an age of luxury and ironically are part of the tourism trade today. Visitors love to drive by and wonder at the Victorian palaces of another time.
travel through time as Rod Taylor hurdles himself into the unknown aboard the time machine. Then tracks through space. I'm afraid. Don't be. The maiden voyage ended in disaster. Now Roy Scheider's leading them back. You have two days. What's going to happen? Something wonderful. 2010, the year we make contact. Journey through time and space with the time machine. And 2010, beginning at 8.05 Eastern on TBS Thursday night. Mother and Dad, all aboard for the Cheerios Globetrotter Sweepstakes. You can win a trip to any of the 12 exciting foreign lands shown on KLM Royal Dutch Airlines travel posters on Cheerios package backs. Four KLM travel posters on each special package make wonderful trading cards for you kids. And you can help your folks pick the vacation they'd choose as one of the big first prizes. A 15-day expense-paid trip by giant KLM airliner. As second prizes, Mom and Dad, a 10-day expense-paid vacation to Holland and Paris. 1,000 third prizes. Big KLM airliner models that start their own engines, rev up and taxi off, all automatically. To enter, simply send in your name, address, and KLM destination you choose. Complete sweepstakes rules from this address. Or on these special Cheerios packages. So get Cheerios today, the delicious oat cereal that's ready to eat. second of every day, an average of five airplanes are taking off or landing somewhere in these United States. Every day, our airlines fly, on the average, a distance equal to four round trips to the moon. Air cargo aircraft annually carry a half billion pounds of freight in and out of one large airport. So it all adds up to a lot of activity. As many as 50,000 passengers pass through a major terminal in a day, most of them with luggage. There are going to be continually more passengers. These passengers are going to fly more miles, and they are going to fly them faster. For the airlines to set up fast schedules and then meet them requires more than the raw speed of the jets. For you to have breakfast in New York and then be in Los Angeles in time for a second breakfast involves a lot more than the flying time from coast to coast. That is the reason for all the changes in facilities, equipment and techniques you are always seeing at airports and for the constant improvements being made behind the scenes that you don't see, but from which you benefit as a passenger. 